Well, welcome everyone. Uh, like I shared earlier, we're just going to talk about uh, basics of pruning and pruning fruit. Uh, this is going to be an overview of a lot of different uh, concepts for pruning uh, and a little bit of the science behind the pruning as to how it works and why it works and why uh, it is important. I'm John Porter. I'm the Urban Agriculture Program Coordinator uh, with Nebraska Extension. I'm located in Omaha uh, and I assist people who want to grow fruits and vegetables uh, on a home scale and also on a commercial scale, uh, small scale farmers, urban farmers, etc. Uh, and so as I get started here, um, we, can add, we can talk about why do we need to prune? And there's a few reasons uh, you know, we, we're told that we have to prune, but why do we actually have to prune? Uh, so one of the things that most people don't realize is we're actually managing the light that gets to the plant and gets to the leaves. Uh, and light is important because that's what drives photosynthesis, uh, which allows the plant to develop sugars, uh, which allows the plant to grow, but also is important for fruit because that is what allows the fruit to grow and provides the sweetness and the flavor for fruit. Uh, and so light management is very important for both fruit size and fruit quality. Uh, and so we'll talk about that for maximal fruit production, uh, meaning that if a fruit uh, plant produces too many fruits, uh, they will be smaller and lower quality. So we're actually gonna limit the number of fruits so we have better fruits uh, and better quality. We also uh, do pruning to have strong branching structures, um, especially when we have a lot of windy weather or uh, heavy snow, uh, we can uh, get a lot of tree damage and um, pruning can actually help us form strong trees because um, trees uh, and fruit trees are investments and we wanna protect those. Uh, size management, uh, so fruit trees and fruiting plants come in different sizes. Uh, and you can actually uh, use pruning to make them smaller. Uh, we also use pruning uh, to um, make them uh, bush out or cause lateral growth. And we'll talk about that at length. And then also we're going to increase airflow. So if we have a really dense canopy in our fruit, uh, we get more diseases. Uh, and this goes for a lot of plants. So the more sort of condensed all of that foliage is, then or, uh, diseases we have, uh, and those really do show up on the fruits when we see so a lot of those rots and spots happening on our fruits. And so uh, pruning can help with that airflow and can help with disease management in our fruit. So um, our pruning also helps with what we would call bushing out or lateral growth, um, because when we have a plant that's growing, uh, and it has that uh, end bud, what we call the apical bud, um, that bud actually produces a hormone and releases it through the rest of the plant uh, that keeps these little lateral buds, the side buds, from growing. Uh, and so you can actually get branches or even entire trees where it's basically a straight stick with very little branching and very little growth if we don't prune the tip of that off to allow that side growth to happen. So uh, in this example on the right, we have this branch that's sticking out. Uh, and this end bud right here uh, is producing uh, a, a hormone called auxin that is released back through the branch and keeps all the other buds from branching out. And so that branch will keep growing straight out versus bushing out. And you can see that here at the bottom. Um, so if we don't prune, if we don't prune off that end bud, we get a lot of straight up growth, that, that uh, vertical growth, but we don't get a lot of horizontal growth, that bushing out. But if we take that end bud off, so that top um, bud off of there, we get the bushing out. And it's the same thing for these side branches. So they will keep growing out. And if we do that heading back where we take that uh, apical bud off, We'll get better branching. Uh, and for most of our fruits, it's on that newer growth, the branching out where we get fruit production. Um, typically, most fruits, uh, they produce on uh, wood that's between one and three years old, depending on the, on the plant. And we'll talk about when we talk specific plants, uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, but most of them, uh, they don't produce on a lot of the older wood. And so if we just have this branch that keeps growing, it's finally it's eventually going to just, you know, not be productive. 
productive. We want that branching out for our plant, for our tree to be productive. Like I also said, um, we're managing light. So it's interesting to think, but if we have a leaf and we have a leaf below it, directly below it, that leaf above uh, lowers the light intensity to 10%. So if this leaf were in full sunlight, uh, it would have 100% sun, but the leaf over it actually shades it and it reduces the sunlight, it gets to 10% of the normal level of sunlight. Uh, we reduce our photosynthesis to about 28% of what, would, what it would be in the full sunlight. Uh, and therefore we limit the, the sugars, the carbohydrates that can go to our fruits uh, or to our spurs, which some trees produce with spurs. Um, and that is how we get our production. And so we actually, when we get that shading, we are actually limiting the amount of fruit and the quality of fruit that we get. And most people don't really think about that. About uh, a tree here, you know, all the tree, the leaves on the top, the very top of the tree are going to get between 100 at the very edge to 60% uh, of the sunlight. And that's about a third of our leaf area. And then in the middle uh, of the tree, of the canopy, we get between 30 and 60%. Uh, and that's a little more than a third of the leaf area. And then all the way down here at the bottom, uh, we get a um, very small amount of, of sun. Uh, so only 30, zero to 30% of the percentage of full sun. And so this area down here, we're spending a lot of energy to sort of keep the, the, the lights on, I would say, uh, to keep the plants growing. But uh, we're not getting a lot of production because they're using energy that could then go into fruits. Now we have different size fruit trees uh, and they all have sort of different percentages of that really shaded area. Um, most homeowners uh, and home gardeners are going to be growing uh, a dwarf or a semi-dwarf tree. Um, and those have very small areas. Um, you know, a dwarf tree is eight feet. A semi-dwarf uh, tree typically is up to about 12 feet. Um, those are probably the best for homeowners because they're going to be the most productive uh, in terms of the size of the tree. Uh, and also they're the fastest to produce. You can get production uh, usually within three to five years on those, whereas it can take much longer in a, a, a standard tree. Um, so if you were to just plant an apple seed uh, or get what you would call a standard tree, that tree is gonna be about 20 feet tall. It's gonna be hard, hard for most homeowners to harvest. Uh, without specialized equipment or waiting for the fruit to fall to the ground. And we see that we get much more shading at the bottom of that canopy. And so we're using a lot more energy and those trees are less productive uh, in terms of the, the return on fruiting in, in relationship to the size of the canopy. Then we talk about when to prune. <laughs> and the time that we actually say it's time to prune is late winter. And people would say, well, when is late winter? Uh, late winter, so spring, the first day of spring is March 21st. Um, so it's definitely before then. Typically, um, pruning uh, happens best in uh, the, the February uh, to early March timeframe is usually when, um, you know, it's before the the tree breaks dormancy and the buds start to open, um, but the weather isn't as harsh uh, for either the pruner to get out and actually be pruning outside, you know, and not be below zero and, and have a lot of snow. But also in terms of um, the plant has gone through winter and if there's any winter damage, uh, you don't want to, you know, you technically can prune um, early in winter, but if you do a lot of pr heavy pruning uh, and then we have a really harsh winter, you're going to get some dieback. And it'd be much better to have that um, pruning uh, that happens after um, or after that winter damage so that then you're not losing even more of the tree to winter damage. Now, this is not to say that um, if there is any damage throughout the growing season, let's say you have a storm and you have uh, limbs, um, that need to come out, those can come out anytime, but the majority of our fruit pruning uh, is going to happen around this time of year. So you wanna do it before those buds start to open up. And it's either both the, the leaf buds, which these are the leaf buds down along 
uh, this uh, stem here, so the ones that are flat against the tree, or the flower buds, uh, which are these uh, bigger, juicier buds. Uh, so you want to do your pruning before those open up. Um, uh, then you'll get some physiological things and, and some growth that you don't want. So uh, next is how to prune. Uh, and you don't want to do it like this, where you're actually sitting on the branch uh, you know, that you're pruning off. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, several different things about how to prune. And we're going to start with tool selection. Uh, so um, we just have some pictures here. I do have some show and tell. So most people uh, are um, familiar with uh, pruners, hand pruners. Uh, and so we have bypass and anvil are two different varieties. I'm going to recommend that you use a bypass pruner. Um, most people will recommend using, uh, against using an anvil pruner. Uh, so bypass pruner, uh, I think I wanna have to turn my, uh, my fuzzy background off here. So we can see, there we go. So we have our hand pruners here uh, and the bypass pruner is the type where they actually, they're like scissors. So the, it bypasses, they don't come together. Um, and those typically are the best for pruning because the anvil pruner, what it does is it has a sharp blade and then there's a flat surface and the anvil just goes against the flat surface. And we can often get a lot of crushing on the branch uh, when that happens. Uh, and so uh, these are much less likely to do that. Uh, I like these. Um, these are interesting because most of um, our bypass pruners and our anvil pruners, the hand pruners will prune up to about a half an inch of a branch. So any bigger than that, um, you don't get enough leverage and also you can get damage. These I like because they actually uh, have a dial on them. Uh, and so I can go from, uh, if I have a small grip or I have a small branch, the dial goes down and it's that big. Or if I have, you know, a big grip, or if I need more leverage, or if I have a bigger branch, it opens all the way up. Uh, and so those are kind of full. cool. It's uh, sort of a dial a size on there. Uh, so those are my, my pruners I carry with me. I have them in the car. Uh, an anvil pruner, of course, uh, does the same thing, but you can get some damage there. Loppers, uh, so they're the big, they have a, uh, a big long um, handle on them. Um, you can do larger branches up to one and a half inches typically uh, because you get more leverage and strength because it's basically like a, you know, a big lever. Uh, and so you actually get more power um, by having that bigger a bigger area where you can actually um, chomp down on those branches. Uh, and so those are the, the most common things that, that people use. But if you have bigger trees and need bigger tools, there are some tools uh, to help with that. So a pole pruner, um, you can prune high overhead. Um, you, you can typically get them that it's like an extendable pole. They'll go from, uh, let's say um, 12 to 15 feet long. Uh, it's on a pole and uh, it's an interesting function. So um, I have one right here with me, you know. Uh, so prune a, a branch that's 12 to 15 feet up in the air. Uh, what you do is, so the, the way these uh, pole pruners work, uh, this hook goes on your branch and you can just rest it right on there. And then you have a cord that runs all the way down to you at the ground that has a handle on it. And when you pull that down, what happens that, as you can see there, the blade comes up uh, from the bottom uh, and you can do your pruning that way. And I just so happen uh, to have a branch here. So I don't know if I can use both hands. We'll see here. Um, so I've got that hooked on my branch, and then I just start pulling down, and I just cut it just like that. So it's a handy little tool uh, to use for that. Uh, you can use a handsaw, so you can cut up larger branches using that. 
Um, there is a technique to that, and I'll show share that with you. And then um, if you need a, a saw higher up in the tree, you can get a pole saw, and you can usually get a combination of the pole pruner and the pole saw too, where you have both of them uh, on there. But you have to watch out any of those pole things, you have to watch out for the falling branches. So be aware of those. <laughs> so there's a sort of a close up of that combination. So there's the, the saw and then the, the pruner, and this just goes on a, a telescoping pole. Um, most of them are between 12 and 15 feet. And then you just pull down and you've got yourself uh, a pruner above your head. So when we actually look at uh, pruning, uh, there's a few things to keep in mind. Uh, so there's the proper angles of pruning um, and the proper uh, distance from the bud. So if we actually look here, we're gonna prune uh, to a bud uh, or another branch uh, on our tree. And we want to uh, be close enough to this branch. We don't want uh, a big long um, stump left on here. This is gonna die. Uh, and then that can sort of uh, allow it, be an avenue for diseases and insects to get in. So we want it close, but not too close. You know, you want it, um, you know, right flush with that bud and you want it at about a 45 degree angle uh, that just lets you know water and things sort of uh, flush off of there uh, as well you don't want it straight across you don't want it too angled it's sort of like a, a goldilocks moment right there too the other thing to to think about when you're pruning back to a bud or a branch is that you're pruning for direction so that bud that you leave uh, is going to provide the direction of growth for the branch so um let me, yeah, just have all of my branches and trees and things hanging around here uh, with me. Uh, so if I'm going to, you know, do some pruning, let's say I have, I have this branch right here, and I just need to do some top, uh, some end pruning here. So I have my, my apical bud here, then I have a bud here, a bud here, and a bud here. And I'm going to look at which direction these buds are going. Because maybe maybe I don't want my my branch to start growing this direction. I want it to grow up and out like this. So what I would do is I would choose this bud right here that's growing up and out versus this one that's going to grow down. And so that's where I'm going to do my pruning right here. So I'm going to go try to do this and hold my tongue just right so you can see it and also stay in focus. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do my, my pruning right there above that bud. And so now it's going to grow out in the right direction for me. Now, when I'm doing um, something with a saw, uh, we have to make sure that we don't damage the tree. So um, when we cut this, if we were to just cut this right here, that branch would start to fall off and we would we could strip the bark if you've ever seen that happen. Uh, we don't want that to happen uh, as you know that branch is falling uh, and we're stripping the bark down the trunk as we go. So we actually make some initial uh, pruning cuts uh, to go along with that. So we do one uh, cut about um, uh, between six and 12 inches from the trunk you cut about a quarter to a third of the way through up from the bottom. So that's gonna stop that peeling bark uh, if you do that cut. Next to relieve most of the pressure, uh, you know, we don't want that to, you know, to fall down if it's a big branch. We're just gonna cut off the branch uh, beyond that saw cut. Uh, so an inch or so beyond that, that'll take that weight off, that'll take the pressure off. And then we can come in and we can cut uh, further down and we're not we're going, we're going to cut closer than this I'll show you so we actually want to look on the right side of this we had our first cut right here we have our our second cut that cut off the majority of the branch and then we're going to cut come down here close to what we call the branch collar so you'll see this this uh, sort of swollen area where the branch attaches uh, so that's where um, um, that attachment is we don't want to cut into that. We want to leave that. Uh, and so you're going to cut on the outside of that branch collar. We don't want to cut straight down. Uh, it'll be at a slight angle just to leave that branch collar in place. And so that will be um, 
cutting with a saw and cutting larger branches. That's where we look. So you always want to leave that branch collar in place on, a, on bigger branches where you see that. Uh, and then uh, with the remainder of my uh, time, which I want to just speed through these. Um, so there's different types of pruning systems for different trees uh, and shrubs. And I'm going to go through them quickly because we want to cover them more in detail when we talk about specific types of trees and specific uh, types of uh, fruits. But um, we will provide uh, in the links, we're going to provide some uh, documents for you uh, that has more details, some from Nebraska, some from other states, uh, with pruning guides that you can use. If you need to get out, you know, this week or the next few weeks and do some pruning, um, you'll know the terms uh, so that then you can make the right decisions and follow those guides. So some trees will use what is called an open vase or an open center uh, cut, where you're actually going to um, have sort of like a bowl-like shape to the tree. Uh, and then we have um, most trees that we grow are is a central leader where we have, you know, the one stem that goes straight up, uh, and then we have branches that come off of this. Or we can have a modified center leader uh, where we're going to let it grow up so far, and then we're going to cut off the central leader uh, and sort of have it uh, as a, a more open shape. Uh, but we've let it grow up so far with the central leader. But before we get to that. We're going to do uh, what most people uh, find the scariest part of pruning trees. Uh, so you buy a brand new tree and it comes as what we would typically call a whip. Uh, so it's basically a stick. Uh, if it's a bare root plant, it's a stick with a little bit of roots on it and you plant that. If it's a potted tree, it's a stick that's in a pot and you just bury the, the, the roots. Sometimes they will come branched out and that's okay. But Remember that uh, when we bought our tree, uh, it has apical dominance. So this um, apex right here, that's releasing that hormone that will keep this whip from branching out. We can't have that. And so we have to do uh, what is uh, very scary for most people, our planting um, prune, if it's not already done. Some of them come pre-pruned, uh, depends on where you buy it. Uh, I'm going to sort of back up here a little bit. So I have my pretend whip here. So it's a, a straight stick of a tree, which I could get. Um, so I'm planting this and I need to do my initial prune. So I've, I told my dad uh, when he did this that basically you have to take your heart med medication before you do this, because you're gonna go about 30 to 45 inches above the ground. Uh, and you're going to prune. You want to make a pruning cut right there. And you're going to cut the top of that tree off. And so that releases that apical dominance. And then we're going to get branches coming out. If we don't do that, we're going to have a stick with very few branches. And so this will let us have these little branches grow out. And this top bud that I picked is going to be our new leader. So it's going to be growing out here and it's going to grow straight up. And then we'll pick the best three to four little branches down here at the bottom uh, and have that tr trained out uh, to grow. And uh, when we're growing central leader, what we do is we keep pruning out. So here's that first year or after the first year, we have those, we picked four branches. They're sort of the way I explain it, it looks like a really cheap artificial Christmas tree. You know, you've seen the kind where you have like a layer of branches and then an empty space and then a layer of branches. Uh, so that's what we're going to do with our central leader fruit trees. This is most common for things like apples, pears. Um, but we're going to have like four branches here. We're going to go maybe a foot and a half, two feet. We're going to cut the top of our central leader again. We're going to let it branch out. We're going to pick three to four of the best branches. We're going to let it keep growing. And we're just going to keep cutting the top of it off and, until it stops growing. And then we will have multiple layers of branches um, for us. If we're doing that vase shape or that open center pruning, uh, instead of uh, pruning to where I'm going to have a new central leader, I'm going to basically cut it off and keep any of them from growing as a central leader. And then basically they're just gonna grow out. And then I wanna just sort of keep pruning those and turn it into like a big bowl or a big vase 
uh, and it won't have a central leader. Um, and then there's other things that we have to do. So removing suckers and water sprouts are big. So my, my pretend uh, whip here was actually a water sprout uh, out of a tree. Uh, and we want to prune for, you know, we don't want branches going in. Uh, we don't want branches that are really close together or rubbing together. Uh, we want to have that nice open frame on that tree so that we can um, make sure we have good airflow, we have good fruit production, um, and we, we have things that are, are more productive. Because that vertical growth, like those water sprouts, things like that, uh, they're very vigorously, um, uh, vegetatively vigorous. They grow very fast, very big. They have lots of leaves, but they don't grow fruit. And they're actually also a weak join onto the tree. Our more horizontal growth <coughs> is not overly vigorous fruit, uh, vegetatively wide, but they are very fruitful. Uh, and typically we're aiming for about a 60 degree angle. So we're, we're wanting, we don't want things growing straight out. We don't want them growing straight up. We want them growing out at about a 60 degree angle uh, from, from the trunk. So here's those weak joins. You see, you know, we get those very um, weak joins and we get a bark inclusion, which means this splits very easily uh, versus those good 60 degree joins. We get the, the tree uh, and the branches connecting very well. We're going to do grapes and bramble later on in the season, but there are you know, major ways that we do grapes and um, uh, brambles. So grapes we have where we can do like a big spur. So the, the thing to remember about grapes is that basically every year you, you almost have to start back at the beginning. You cut all the new growth off because they produce some new growth. So you cut all that off and then you let the new, the new spurs, the new canes grow out. And that's where you get production. Where people mess up with grapes often is that they just let them keep growing. And that old growth is never gonna grow grapes and you just keep sort of getting weaker and weaker growth. Um, and so uh, we have two ways to deal with that. We'll talk about that when we have grapes later in the series. And then the thing to remember about, about brambles is blackberries, raspberries, uh, they're perennial roots. So they come back year after year. Um, but in most cases, the canes that produce the fruit, the plant, um, they're biennial. So the first year they're going to produce the cane and it's just going to be leaves. And the second year it's going to produce fruit. Uh, but as John Fesch shared, uh, he likes what we call a primal cane uh, version or the fall uh, version, um, which they produce fruit on this first year growth. And that makes it easier to prune uh, because you can just prune it all back to the ground instead of having to just prune out the old canes that have produced fruit and have to leave these. So we'll talk about that more later in the series. There are other training techniques. Uh, once, if we need to get to those 60 degree um, angles, you can use spreaders, you can make them or you can buy them. You know, you can use a ruler, you can use a stick. You just don't want to damage the, you know, um, the bark too much with those. Uh, you can use weights. I've seen people make these out of like um, clay or, or concrete with clothespins and a nail. Um, I've seen people just tie water bottles onto trees. You can do a tie down uh, and staking. Staking is more for when you plant a new tree and um, if you need to stake it should last only about a year or two. If it's still wobbly after that it's not planted appropriately. We'll talk more about planting later on in the series. And if you want to, you know, go all out, uh, you can do the fancy um, pruning. This is called espalier, uh, and you can grow fruits against the wall. But this is like um, very intensive. You have to to basically prune it several times a year. Um, but I thought I would just throw that in there 